So operational efficiency now, and I think this is one of the most important parts of this course because most students will understand the relationship between more sales equaling more revenue equaling more profit. Um, but often students don't think about the other side of profit, which is costs and getting your costs as low as possible but also getting the cost, the average cost or the unit cost per item that you make as low as possible um, so that you're actually increasing profit margins. So let's have a look at this section. So for the specification you need to explain the importance to businesses of operating efficiently and the ways in which you can become more operationally efficient and we're going to look at technology in particular but we have also looked at some methods already in previous um, presentations so motivation is a way of becoming more operational efficient um, and training is a way of becoming more motivationally uh, sorry operationally efficient um, so key terms operational efficiency is producing your goods and services to an acceptable standard you're not just um, making them shoddy they've got to be um, a, a good standard good quality but with as few resources as possible so it's really about getting that unit cost as low as possible now unit cost is also known as average cost we call it average cost in economics um, but they just mean the same thing unit cost in businesses average cost in economics same thing unit cost just being the cost of producing one unit and we, we work that out by looking at your average so we take all your total costs and divide it by the number of units now if you're good at maths what you'll do is immediately recognize that to get the number that this is going to equals as small as possible either what we have to do is reduce total costs so that's the more obvious point or we need to increase the number of units that we make so get more um, units produce more goods and services with the resources that we already have okay so there's two kind of key ways of increasing operational efficiency um, and that's why motivation can help um, because we might have be paying our employees on you know salaries fixed salaries uh, so we want them to be as productive as possible so that the number of units is greater Okay, so here, just looking at an example of why this is very important. So I've just come up with two businesses, Yummy Bites and Tasty Snacks, and they, they sell £4 burgers. Um, and they both have the same price. And you can, you can see they, they both sell the same amount of burgers as well. Maybe they're in a very similar area. Um, however, Yummy Bites um, has a cost of £2.50. Um, and Tasty Snacks have a cost per burger of £2.75. So when we look at the numbers, when we're looking at revenue per month they're like both going to be making the same amount of revenue that was just the the four pounds times the two thousand when we look at costs it's going to be the two pounds fifty times that two thousand um, and then when we deduct your costs that five thousand from the eight thousand or the five thousand five hundred from the eight thousand there um, we're going to get the profit and we're going to see that profit is quite different so even though they've got the same price they're selling the same amount um, if their costs are different because of operational efficiency so the average cost is different then you're going to see that the amount of profit that they're making is going to be different as well and the the business with the higher costs are going to make the lower amount of profit so it's very very important and it's that other side to profit remember you know profit is this two-sided coin you've got revenue on one hand but you've also got um, the costs on the other hand or the other side um, so ways of improving operational efficiency I've just got some examples um, here so we could have automation or robotics um, uh, computer and robotics is often referred to as computer aided design um, we've got automation like stock control systems um, that are very commonly used in supermarkets but lots of other businesses as well um, so when you buy something in a supermarket it sends an automatic signal to a database somewhere saying that um, there's one less of that item and you know once that gets to a certain level more needs to be ordered you've got um, communication technology um, so you will have grown up with this technology really but um, I certainly didn't we didn't even well no we did have the internet when I was your, your age if you're taking your GCSEs this year but um, we certainly didn't have YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or 
all of those Tumblr, which I don't even know what it is. So, you know, <laughs> we didn't have those things. Uh, and then you've got the kind of design elements as well. So computer aid design and computer aided um, manufacturer um, of the actual products and robotics links into that kind of computer aided manufacturer um, process. But I've made, I pre-made some notes here. They're not so neat, but I'll just take you through them really quickly and um, I can show you how they improve um, um, the operational efficiency. So benefits of using robotics. Um, robotics are actually really, they're very accurate and especially when you're making cars which is what this picture is of here, they can cut things very very accurately and place them together and make these almost identical products um, and they can produce more output, they can lift really heavy things. Um, as you can see here, every time they don't get bored, they don't need holidays, they don't need pay rise, they don't need to be told, oh well done, you've done a great job today. Um, however, they're going to be really expensive to purchase and install, especially for a small business, because we're thinking about small businesses here. And uh, the production process is going to be a lot more complex, you can have to have technicians, um, breakages as well, or kind of shutdowns can delay work for the whole of the the business and the whole business process because everything's so kind of technologically advanced that problems that do occur are likely to be quite serious problems so automation uh, the process should become a lot quicker so you have lower administration costs of kind of um, keeping track of all the stock and those types of things so occasionally and it usually happens if you go into a supermarket quite late at night occasionally they're doing a stock take and what they're doing is they're matching up the items with what's on the computer system now it is quite frustrating when you go into a shop when they're doing that because often they block off kind of aisles and you can't purchase certain things because they're going through this like big counting process but if they didn't have these stock control systems they would have to do that a lot more often um, and it would cost it costs money when you're you know using staff to do those types of things rather than getting them on the sales floor and selling um, so it's it having these systems should reduce um, staff costs uh, but they are expensive to install and you've got to maintain them as well you've got to have technical people that know what they're doing with those communication you can communicate with employees and multiple Multiple locations really easily so that's you know if you've got a business that, that has multiple locations maybe even some abroad it's much easier you can communicate with them 24 7 you can send emails you know any time of the day it's not gonna um, you know disturb people too much you can't hold a meeting though at you know three in the morning unless it's an emergency meeting um, so it, it means that you can get a lot of things um, sorted at, all times of day people can continue working if they want um, and uh, it should reduce the time taken between asking a question and getting an answer however problems you get information overload I have a lot of emails that I haven't read that are in my inbox I should really read and get through um, there are also problems um, with people sending emails late at night um, it can get other employees quite stressed um, I'm a bit guilty of this actually I like to get everything kind of sorted for the next day and if I've got an email I need to send late at night I'll send it but then other colleagues have commented that they find it a bit stressful when they receive an email from me at 11 o'clock at night to which my response is not very sympathetic I'm like why are you reading your emails at 11 o'clock at night I'm not sympathetic turn off your phone but you know people get very stressed out about these things should probably be nicer to people but um, design technology you probably have learnt all about this in design um, technology, <laughs> your CDT classes. So you can, with um, computer aided design, you can really easily adjust models. So we're really, this is all all old stuff that you can kind of comparing it to. Probably you've never done this, but um, hand drawn designs, um, you know, in used to be common in manufacturing, and now we have computer computers and we can easily adjust them and turn them into 3D models and rotate them and, and store the designs and email them to other people so they can work on them. So you get a great um, greater level of um, accuracy and adaptability and then you can link these designs up with your manufacturing as well with your 3D, uh, 3D printers um, and so you get this high level of accuracy but again so your staff are going to need to be trained to use it and it's going to be expensive to be able to purchase this so um, that's all of the specification objectives but just remember that you already have knowledge so it's not just always technology where your uh, average costs can be um, lowered um, 
basically all of this technology here is increasing your output. So although it's quite expensive to purchase, you're, you're increasing that bottom, if I just go back, that bottom part number of units that you're making. But remember, motivation and motivating staff can do that. Also minimising wastage, so lean production, although that's unit two, that can come into it. So, you know, Kaizen and um, zero defects and all of that stuff as well and specialization it's a little bit more unit two um, but those are ways that you can become more operationally efficient as well so let's just get your specification objectives back there we go